All right, and we are back. Hey, everybody. Corey here. Today marks another day to just chase after who you want to be and to keep working on on the person who you truly want to become because we know that every single day it involves commitment. Every single day it involves consistency. Every single day it involves those things that you don't always want to do that day because you know that it's not always about how we feel about things, but those things that we want to accomplish and those things that we want to achieve. And sometimes in order to do those things, we have to be able to move beyond ourselves and to work for a greater purpose and a greater goal in view. And that's the goal here because you know what? Yeah, we're here working on ourselves, but ultimately we want to inspire you. We want to inspire you to do the same thing for yourself and to become the best, the best, best possible version that you can be. Not just for you, but for those around you, for the planet, for God, for your loved ones. Because the better you are, the better you'll be able to do and to, to create and to help those around you. You know, there's only so much help you can give to somebody if you're not even able to help yourself. But you know what, if you're able to help yourself and you could actually accomplish so many things and to control you, imagine how many other people you'll be able to help and how many other people you will need um, that you'd be able to bring them into a state of their own mental control so then they could be able to create their own reality. Remember, it's thought. Everything is thought. It, it all starts with the process of our thinking. You know, unless we actually thought about um, clicking on this video to watch it, then we never would have done it. You know, it was first a thought that had entered into the mind and our curiosity was just like, you know what, I am going to check this out. You know, we had to first think about something before it actually happened. And eventually, as it becomes subconscious, we don't need to think about it anymore. It just becomes automatic because it is getting built into our system. It's getting built into this thing that we all live and move and have our own independent consciousness in. And as we live and move and have our being within this body, we also live and move and have our being within the body of God, the all mind, the infinite intelligence, the thing that has created everything. God is the original substance, the, the infinite mind that permeates, penetrates, and fills the interspaces of everything. He is the force that, that exists beyond all material, uh, all material substance. You know, the electron, the most basic particle of what this universe is made out of, behind that electron is a mind. That electron, these like this aloe vera that, that we see, you know, it's made out of electrons. And, and, and these electrons get together and they create atoms. And these atoms get together and they form molecules. We've learned that a molecule is the most uh, simplest form that maintains its own identity, you know, between oxygen and hydrogen. They're molecules. But the oxygen and hydrogen are made from the same things, which would be atoms. Atoms is known as just a definite amount of energy. And then those atoms in turn are made of electrons. And what if we found that the electrons, through the double slit experiment, whatever the mind is observing on, these electrons that the universe is composed out of will, will organize themselves to what your, your mental picture, to what you're envisioning in your mind. It's science. It's, it's scientifically proven that if I sit here and I imagine a chair, and if I see a chair in my mind, what is happening is that since I'm visualizing a chair, the forces of my mind are influencing the electrons of what the universe is composed out of. And, and it's causing these electrons to organize themselves in, in the form of that chair. That's how we can see it with our mind's eye. That's how we can see it in the imagination. It has to be. It, 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 there could be no other way or else we wouldn't be able to see it in here. There would be no nothing to, to look at and it's an amazing concept and it's such a beautiful thing that you know when you actually think about it that we literally do become what we think about we're surrounded by the things we think about you know we're, we're connected with all of these things and as we put our mind our life simply put our life moves in the direction of which our mind goes and and if we're if we visualize negativity or bad things happening we just think negative all the time and think about all these just 
not so positive things, then sure enough, you're going to attract those things and you create those things in your life. And you're just going to be surrounded by negativity because you created that in your mind. And it is the goal of the universe to reflect what is happening within you so you can live um, so you can live that. You, you can live that. Remember, you are creators. That is what we were created to do. We were created to, to create our life. You know, God created us in His image. That is in the image of spirit, and that is to create in our world just as God created the universe. And that starts with the process of our thinking. Because dreams do come true. And every day, in every way, you just got to tell yourself that I'm getting better. Every day, in every way, I am getting better and better. And that no matter what, we just need to keep putting our energies into that place that we want to go. Keep putting the energies into the person you want to be. Socrates said that we don't need to worry about fighting the old. We don't need to fight against our old energies. Because then we're just fighting against ourselves. And we're just, uh, uh, what is this word I'm looking for? Depreciating all of our energies where... We're just uh, uh, that that just building upon that resistance. We'll say that, okay. We don't need to focus on fighting old habits or old things that we used to do. We just need to put our mind and focus on the new things and the new directions that we want to move into. Remember, because the mind will invariably outpicture all that it is it, it will be surrounded by all that it is and it will move in the directions of which it moves into so with all that being said let's go on and continue with chapter 6 chapter 14 I don't know why I said chapter 6 I seen the X and the I and I freaking that would be 11 by itself anyway chapter 14 Perpetual enjoyment goes hand in hand with perpetual youth. The happy mind alone is normal, and to stay young, the mind must be normal. It must be in perfect harmony with nature. To be happy, the mind must have enjoyment. The mind is happy only when something is being enjoyed, be that something tangible or intangible. Therefore, if the mind is to continue to, to be normal and continue to stay young excuse me sorry it's always when I decide to start reading or when I'm talking a lot that I need to release uh, that gas always comes out and I need to burp I'm gonna go ahead and read that last paragraph again to be happy the mind must have enjoyment the mind is happy only when something is being enjoyed but be that something tangible or intangible Therefore, if the mind is to continue to be normal and continue to stay young, enjoyment must be continuous. To secure perpetual youth, it is first necessary to secure perpetual enjoyment. That is, every moment of life must be enjoyed, and enjoyment must be gained from everything that enters into life. To enjoy every moment of life, the mind must be trained to enjoy the living of life. It will be found that when consciousness gains a perfect realization of life itself, Simply to be is joy everlasting, because there is no greater joys than knowing that you're an embodiment and a, a direct reflection of the power that has created all of life. There's no greater enjoyment than knowing that you are one and the same with this substance, God, mind. To depend upon things, events, or circumstances for happiness is to find but the shadow Real joy comes only when things, events, and circumstances are animated with the living of real life, the soul of tangible existence. It is the soul of things that gives joy, and it can give joy without being tangibly expressed through things. But the greatest joy comes invariably from the largest expression of soul through the most wholesome conditions of things. To seek an abundance of wholesome enjoyment in the world of things is therefore necessary to give richness, fullness, and completeness to the expression of that perpetual joy that comes from the living of the soul. To be happy every single moment, to be happy every single moment must be one of the chief aims of every mind. But happiness should not be sought for the mere purpose of gratifying the desires of the person. Now. 
I don't know if you guys know who Glenn Morshower is uh, at work. I do part-time security. I had started that up again. It's amazing how it it, it uh, actually happened um, when I was at uh, Planet Fitness uh, training my client Ralph. I ran into my old security guard manager, which was Fernando, and I just asked him if they had any part-time jobs open. Lo and behold, you know, a little bit of extra money is going to be coming in, and that's great because then it will give us at least a little bit more comfort as we chase our dream of becoming who we want to become. Um, you know, one thing I've learned is that money will not make you happy regardless of how much you have. If you're not happy in here, and if you can't make yourself happy, or if your own thoughts, because nothing affects us more than our own immediate thinking. If you can't be happy within your mind, there is absolutely nothing external that will be able to make you happy. Now, gratitude. I was talking about Glenn Morshower. While I was at work, I was doing security for a graduation, and a speaker, Glenn Morshower, he's actually an actor, and he played in Transformers. He was one of the, the, he, he was actually the lead uh, Marine um, guy in the movie. Um, the guy that grabbed the knife and just straight cut the cords as uh, the Decepticons were trying to distill all the information from the military base. This guy gave a speech, and I went up, like we talked a little bit after, I introduced myself, because I, for one, that's one of my dreams, to be on stage, to share my story, and to just speak to people, and to talk about life, you know, that they could do what they want to do, that they could be what they want to be, and they could have what they want to have, that they just need to learn this mind, and learn the forces of the universe, and the fact that this force that created everything is the same force of which your very consciousness is composed, and that thought is the only activity that our consciousness possesses, and this uh, this being true, thought exists on a plane above all the material plane, you know, and we have the ability to think any type of thought we have, and this instrument, this mechanism we have, this brain, will is, is so advanced it's so beyond the brain of, of any other creature on this planet that it has the ability to to accept and, and to to you know to be able to express whatever thoughts that we harbor you know we we have the brain we have simply because we have the mind we have you know everything physical is a manifestation of the part of us that is spiritual you know we have a spiritual mind and we have a conscious mind and a consciousness that is beyond any other creature on this planet which is exactly why we have a brain that is beyond any other creature on this planet and this man Glenn Morshower he would talk about gratitude they all talk about gratitude you have to be grateful you have to be thankful for what you have and yet you have to remember it's something that is within and when you enter into that state of being grateful you will attract without a doubt other things to be grateful about because if you could prove to not just God, but to yourself that, you know what, I, I, I have the ability and I can be perfectly happy regardless of this and regardless of that. Because only when you know that you have overcome the world, then you can truly, truly have, be, and do anything which you desire to be. And happiness, the greatest of all joys is happiness and heaven is here and now. To be happy every single moment must be one of the chief aims of every mind, but happiness should not be sought for the mere purpose of gratifying the desires of the person. Happiness should be sought for its own sake and for the greater richness of life that is always realized through continuous attitudes of joy. The period of enjoyment should be extended indefinitely and should not be confined to the earlier periods of personal existence. To be true to himself, every person must be happy as long as he lives. But if he is not happy as long as he lives, he is not true to himself. The world of false belief declares, quote, Let the young enjoy themselves while they can. They will get old soon enough, end quote. Also, quote, We are young but once. Let us enjoy ourselves while we are young. When age comes, there is neither desire nor capacity for enjoyment anymore, end quote. And that is what a lot of people... That is a mindset that a lot of people have. They feel that they're older. Since they are older, they can't have fun. You know, they can't say a specific thing or they can't do a specific thing. 
You know, that's something kids do. You know, you can't do that because you're an adult already. Screw that. Screw that. Kids know what's up. Kids know what's up because kids, before they're conditioned by this world of Caesar, the world that distracts us from the truth and the reality of the real world, which is the spiritual world, you know, that the spiritual world is in fact the world in which we live in here and now, melded with the material world that we live in here and now. The majority of mankind lives in the material portion of this existence. And only a few people live and are aware of the spiritual portion of our existence. They're both existing at the same time here and now. Almost fell off my stability ball. The language of darkness and despair, the language of those who have placed themselves in the bondage of false race thought, and do not know that they that they are others, that they are others than free men thinking their own original thought. Hold on, I gotta read that one again. The language of darkness and despair, the language of those who have placed themselves in bondage to false race thought, and do not know that they are others. That they are that they are others than free men thinking. That they are other. I think that they probably I don't they shouldn't have added an S to other, so and do not know that they are other than free men thinking their own original thought. They're not free, they're not free of, of their thoughts, they're not free in their mind. Their mind isn't freed yet. Because they're 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 bound by the thought that hey I can't do that because that is not what adults do. The belief that the young must enjoy themselves while they can causes the majority of those who are still young to cram several times as much quote enjoyment end quote into the space of a few years as the consciousness of those years can possibly operate. Now it's amazing that he actually says that in, in the concept that he presents to us right now because how true is that? Um, you know, I can say that I've personally experienced that in my life. You know, you have that feeling of, oh, I need to grow up now. Oh, I need to, I need to start being a certain someone now or I need to meet the status quo of somebody else now or, or, or to be, um, you know, that, that, that's just something that is requiring, pulling some type of requirement from you and it, and it it pulls from, you know, your 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 happiness, your thoughts, and it, and it just might cause you more stress because you're not because you're trying to cram the youthful years into one in, in, into as short amount of years as you can. You know, I think that's why people get. Uh, I think that's a, I firmly believe that's a huge reason why kids do um, not so well. A lot of kids do not so well after they graduate out of school, um, you know, because they, they're known to meet some type of requirements in order just to live in this world of Caesar. But it's, it's, let's go, let's go ahead and move on. It's just, I, I'm, I'm one of those people. Uh, I've, I've experienced it, knowing that, hey, I need, to, I need to meet certain requirements in this world now. You know, and it requires you to think a specific way. Even though we're learning that consciousness is something that just is, and that our thoughts are the directing force of all of our mental energies, but the reality of life is this, just the spirit, that the spirit is the only reality. But when you have to meet specific requirements of this world you have to think a certain way remember we become what we think about and our, our thoughts are the directing force of all of our mental energies if we get a job we have to keep that job within our mind the idea of that job within our mind if we let go of the idea that we have that job or if we start moving our mind and our thoughts towards another direction then our all of our forces from here will be taken away and then this will no longer be a part of our reality because we're moving our mind into another direction we're no longer thinking about this we're thinking about something else 
This is why a lot of people get so stressed when they're at work because if they're not doing what they want to do, then their mind is just getting invaded with all these thoughts of negativity and how much they just dislike what they're doing. And, and then that just happens to, to create more negativity and more uh, bad things in their life because not only are they entertaining that thought, that, that thought is being impressed upon their own subconscious and it's becoming who they are and they're not even aware that they're doing that to themselves. That is why we must overcome the world. The result is that the greater part of the enjoyment that is sought fails to give joy, but instead wearies the mind and hurries the day of the settled life. When the settled life begins, the aging process takes a firm foothold in the system and will soon demonstrate the power in its presence. When children are taught that they can stay young as long as they may live and that they may enjoy themselves as long as they continue to stay young, they will not cram a few short years of youth with every pleasure that may present itself. They will know that there is time to enjoy everything throughout their entire life. They will know that there is time to enjoy everything, to enjoy everything right, and to seek the most wholesome enjoyment of everything. When children are taught these great facts that will not only seek enjoyments of quality, but they will also seek to develop, to develop greater capacity for enjoyment, the development of greater capacity to enjoy will, pro will prove profitable in the light of the fact that enjoyment may continue all through life, and that personal existence may be enjoyed in greater and greater measure. The belief that we are young once is true, but that, quote, once, end quote, continues as long as we live a normal life. We grow old only through the violation of natural law, but nature has the power to restore youth to any personality that returns to the life that is normal in the full sense of that term. To live in the belief that youth is for a short period only is to expect age, and to expect age is to produce age. To live in the belief that we can enjoy ourselves only when we are young is not only to overdo the life of mere pleasure, but pleasure will be sought for the mere gratification of the mind of sense. When he says the mind of sense, which is the, the, the external portion, the mind that, that, that deals with external you know, like the things you see, the things you smell, the things you taste, the, the things you feel when you, um, when you get intimate with somebody on a physical level. It's part of the senses. You know, it's all part of the senses. But of course, yes, there's deeper meanings on getting intimate with somebody on that level. Because the deepest meaning is found with the, the, the presence of the intimacy you feel within the heart and not just from the pleasure you feel from you know having sex with somebody you know it's amazing that we're actually talking about it I seen I went to the park yesterday and you would not believe what I seen it was two people were were you know doing what they're doing it's like three four trees down from me and it was dark, so you couldn't really see it, but you could definitely hear it. You know it. You, you were able to see the motions and what they were doing. And I was just thinking, like, man. <laughs> like, like, dang, man. Not, I, I'm not going to lie. It's It's been a long time since I've experienced that in my life, too. And you know what? I was thinking about when I will experience that as well. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'm human. You know, I, this physical part of me still has its its requirements. You know, if God didn't create me to be to be by myself. God didn't create you to be by yourself the entire time. It's the, the you know the meaning of all of this. I'm just bringing it up is the level of intimacy that you want to 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 have with someone, especially a soulmate needs to be beyond anything that's physical it needs to be beyond it if you if you could connect with them in here and in here and not just out here and that's when you know that's when you know you found you found something worth worth keeping 
We invariably grow into the likeness of that which we enjoy. Therefore, to enjoy the superficial, the sensuous, and the materialistic is to become materialistic and ordinary. It is to waste the limited energies of the personal life without giving any attention to the appropriation of the limitless energies from the great within, as within, so without, as above, so below. To promote the perpetuation of youth, the race belief about pleasure must be entirely re reversed because the world's idea of, of pleasure is the complete opposite of the reality of pleasure. That is why we must reverse we must reverse the race belief of pleasure and, and move on to a higher state of consciousness and to understanding that you know, we're more than just the physical. We're more than just the physical. You know, our, the spiritual portion of us must be fulfilled. Must be fulfilled. And that can only be fulfilled when the other person is spiritually awake as well. He even says it in, in the Bible that the light cannot be with darkness. That the light must be with another light. And that the darkness will swallow and hurt the light. But it will not destroy it. But that part is not properly played by those who accept the race belief on the subject. The race believes that pleasure is incidental and that happiness is something, the cause of which no man knows. Therefore, it comes and goes regardless of what man may think or do. This, however, is not the truth. Happiness can be produced by man at will, and to be true to himself, he must give happiness to every moment of his personal existence. To seek enjoyment is just as important as to seek wisdom or virtue, and wholesome pleasures are just as as valuable in the moral world as righteous thoughts. When happiness is absent, man has gone astray, and when pleasure is sought no more, man has lost his mental grip on the meaning and purpose of life. The mind that is alive needs pleasure just as much as the body that is alive needs nourishment, and to perpetuate the youth of the personality, both mind and body must be thoroughly alive, because happiness puts the mind, puts the consciousness into a higher state of vibration. And a higher state of vibration brings more life and more it is more radiating. A higher state of consciousness radiates more life and more vibration. When the mind is deprived of pleasure, it ceases to live the life of youth. It begins to grow old, and an old mind feels soon will soon cause the body to look as old as the mind feels. To give the mind enjoyment, perpetual enjoyment, is therefore necessary if the youth of the personality is to be retained. To provide the mind with perpetual enjoyment is a problem that is easily solved when the fact is recognized that life itself is made for happiness and that the happy mind alone is normal and that man himself is made for happiness. When the mind is normal, happiness is a natural consequence. Therefore, to be happy at all times, all that it is necessary to keep the mind normal at all times. And that is so true because, you know, when our body feels good, our emotions feel good, and, and we just think good, and we feel better. We think better. We think so much more clear because the mind, our mind is clear. Our, our, our thoughts are clear. Our, our world within is clear. And that, that the internal expresses itself in the actions of the man, uh, whatever actions you take. When we live in, in, in conscious unity with our Creator, and we understand the laws of nature and how our thoughts are, are things, and that our thoughts create our reality, you'll want to be happy all times because once you're negative, you know you're creating negativity with your thinking. The hardest part that I had was accepting that idea and accepting that fact that I'm the one responsible for the negativity in my life and the negative thoughts that I'm harboring. But you know what? Once you finally accept that and you're working to make that better, it feels good and it feels better. And you know what? It kind of gives you some sense of power in knowing that I'm responsible. I'm responsible. 
I'm responsible for my mental state. The normal state, however, can be perfected onto higher and higher degrees of realization. Hold on, I skipped a paragraph. The normal mind is the mind that is in harmony with the laws of nature, and as the principal laws of nature in the life of man are the laws of growth and renewal, the mind that aims to perpetually renew itself and to promote its own perpetual development will readily assume the normal state, well, normal mental state, because the mind that is thinking along the lines of nature and that promotes its own perpetual development, which is the subconscious development, will readily assume the normal mental state. He is alive. He's living normally. He is ordinary. He is as normal as normal could be, and he's become as normal as God has intended humanity to be. To be. And how much the media and all the distractions that, that keep people from knowing who they really are, that people literally grow, go through their entire lives not ever being aware of their, their thoughts without ever reaching the point of self-consciousness to where they're even aware that their thoughts are creating their environment. And that is why we're here, to, to help you. To, to, to help you know and to understand and to realize that you could have be and do anything that you want. But it starts with me that I must have and I must become and I must be the person who I want to be. Because I know that since I am that person, I, I am already that person. I am already that person. I'm that person here and now. You have to believe that you are that person already. If you don't believe you're that person already, you're not going to act from the image of being that person already. And you're never going to bring it out into birth. And you're never going to be that person you want to be. You have to take action. You have to act as if you're that person already. Remember, our thoughts, words, and our actions have to be in line. If our thinking is in line and our words are in line, but we're not acting like we're thinking or saying, then our, we're not in line. We have to act as if that we're already real. That is why Jim Carrey's story is so powerful, because that is exactly what he did. And he became what he wanted to be, an actor, uh, a high-paid actor. If you haven't heard his story, he talks about how well, he, he started off, he was reading a self-development book, and he just put the principles into practice. He put what he wanted on paper, he wrote down what he wanted, he put it in his wallet and he read it every single day. And then he gave himself like five years. He gave himself five to six years to make $10 million, which was his financial goal. And he found that the day before his goal um, was reached, the day before that happened, um, the day before the date was reached to where he put down on his paper um, to accomplish that goal, he found out he was going to make his $10 million off of Dumb and Dumber. Conor McGregor says it too, and, and everybody's learning and knowing about Conor McGregor now. He's a huge, he's probably the biggest uh, um, mixed martial MMA uh, star right now. And he talks about the same thing. If you have, if you have the courage to think it, if you could think it, and you can see it clearly in your mind, and you have the courage to speak it, it will happen. It will happen. It has no choice but to happen because it is a vibration. It is a vibration. Let's go ahead. Let's, let's continue. The normal state, however, can be perfected into higher and higher degrees of realization. And to promote this per perfecting process for the purpose of increasing the capacity for enjoyment, the mind should be trained to appreciate the life, the joy of life on all the planes of existence, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. The reason why happiness in the life of the average person is not constant is found in the fact that enjoyment is sought on one or two planes only, instead of all three. To give the mind perpetual enjoyment, each plane must exercise its power to produce happiness, and the more frequently during each day that these three powers are brought into expression, the greater will be the joy secured. 
To seek pleasure only through the body is to secure only the cheapest kinds of pleasure. To seek pleasure only through the mind is to find a degree of intellectual satisfaction, but no real happiness. To seek pleasure only through the soul is to find those joys that secret that secret moments only the secret moments alone can receive. To seek pleasure only through the soul is to find those joys that secret moments only alone can achieve. Can it receive? I'm sorry, I'm totally reading that wrong. To seek pleasure only through the soul is to find those joys that secret moments alone can receive. They do not touch the personal life of every day unless the life of every day is made to touch the soul, is made to, to bring happiness to the soul. Because as the soul puts its love, the soul must do what it loves to do in order to really perpetuate full youth and happiness into its life. That it cannot just live for its mind and it cannot just live for its body. It has to live for love, for gratitude, for, for gratefulness, for thankfulness, for others. When the conscious ego undertakes to make body, mind, and soul the complete source of all pleasure, the pleasures of the body will be refined and will, in consequence, produce far greater happiness. The pleasures of the mind will be given warmth from the body and ecstasy from the soul, and will therefore become, or will thereby become, a continual feast of sublime richness. The pleasures of the soul will be given full expression through mind and body, and will therefore give continual joy to every moment of personal existence. The mind should be taught at the earliest possible moment to seek enjoyment from all the three planes of life, and should be taught to combine these three into the most perfect unity of thought imaginable. The result will be perpetual enjoyment, harmony, and expression of perfect personal equilibrium. To combine the three sources of pleasure into one, the first essential is to recognize the fact that happiness is a continuous force in the human system, and that the expression of that force would be continuous if consciousness was always free to receive and transmit that expression. But consciousness is not always free, because the only free consciousness is that consciousness that is conscious of the whole life, of the whole of life, body, mind, and soul, all three at all times. When the conscious ego seeks to draw pleasure from the body alone, consciousness is combined is confined in the physical, and a confined consciousness is not a free consciousness. The same is true when the conscious ego seeks pleasure from the mind only or the soul only. To be free, consciousness must not be confined in any one plane, but must be must be permitted to encompass all planes which is why we need to not only exercise and to eat well for our physical being, we need to meditate and do yoga for our mental being, and we need to love and give love to others for our soul, our spiritual being. And when we live in all three and we're working every single day to, to give food and to feed all three, all three of these aspects of our being, we're going to be happy, and, and happiness is, is the greatest of all good. Because heaven is here and now. When in that state, consciousness is in touch with the force of happiness from every source. And in consequence, the individual will always be, be conscious of happiness. Will always feel the real, sublime, and immeasurable joy of life. To live is to create happiness. The living of life gives joy to life. Therefore, so long as life continues, there is a continuous force of happiness in the human system. And this force can be felt at all times when consciousness is free to feel what is in action and in the whole of real life. And this freedom of consciousness is secured when consciousness is conscious of body, mind, and soul, all three at all times. The freedom of consciousness to feel the force of happiness from every source at all times will cause the mind to be nourished with that something that is indispensable to the perpetual aliveness of mind. The mind that is constantly full of joy is always alive, and the mind that is always alive will always stay young. When the mind gains enjoyment from only one of the three sources, it will soon weary of the joy. It will soon weary of the joy. The reason being that the joy is incomplete; it does not give aliveness to the whole system. 
but the mind will never weary of joy when it seeks enjoyment from all three sources of joy, body, mind, and soul, because such a joy will produce perpetual aliveness throughout the entire being of man, and that which is alive in every part cannot be weary in any part. Hmm. You know, after reading that and, and after talking with uh, a friend of mine about it, because we were talking about giving and living for others and, and you know, loving our neighbor, loving our neighbor, we must, <laughs> we must learn how to love our neighbor like we love ourselves. And you must learn to love yourself before you can love anything. Because if you don't know how to love yourself, you will not be able to give love to somebody else because you're always seeking the, the, the feeling of love from something external. But we have to be able to, we have to learn how to just create that, that feeling, that experience within ourselves, not from just relying on some external source to bring us happiness. Because nothing external could ever bring you a happy state of mind if your thoughts are, are still engaged in a negative way of thinking, you could be doing the most funnest thing in the entire world. But if your mind is not in a happy state, the experience of the most funnest thing in the world is not going to be enjoyed to its fullest. We must live in all three aspects of our being. To, to perpetuate the youth of the personality, every part of the human system must be thoroughly alive at all times. To lose life is to grow old and die, and this perpetual aliveness will always continue so long as the mind is supplied with real joy from the three great sources of joy. Therefore, perpetual enjoyment and perpetual youth are one and inseparable. Now that is the end of chapter 14 on perpetual enjoyment goes hand in hand with perpetual youth. We're going to go ahead and end it right here. If you made it to the end of this video with me, thank you so much for watching. And please subscribe. We have a lot more videos and a lot more books like this with great information like this coming for us, from us, read for you in the future. And we really hope you enjoy going through this with us. And we hope we at least make it somewhat exciting, a little bit more exciting for you guys. Because I know it could be pretty boring when you want to learn some really great information that's not really too fun. So with all that being said, I got the hang ups. And I'm going to go ahead and end this right here. And I will see you in the ne next chapter.